I'm going to take a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. But I know what you're thinking to yourselves. First of all, Chris, is this a karaoke mic? Yes, it is. But also, haven't you already tried to take a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy? Everyone's taken a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. Isn't that one of the first things people shoot? Yes, person watching on the internet, you are right. I have, and we all have taken pictures of the Andromeda Galaxy, but I've never been able to capture the whole thing. You see, with my 6 inch scope, I can only get the Galaxy core in frame. So today, I'm going to try to capture the whole galaxy. And I'm going to do it using my guide scope. That's right, you heard correctly. I will be imaging with my guide scope. This is the SV Boney SV 106 50 mm 190 mm focal length achromatic refractor. All right, now hold on. This is a serious video. I have some very good reasons why I want to try this. Number one, because I can. Number two, so you don't have to. And three, because I'm curious, and I'm sure a lot of you are too. What would it actually be like to try to image through your guide scope? Stick around to find out. In order to pull this off, we're gonna to have to switch between our guide camera and our imaging camera, which means connecting the SV Boney 905C camera in APT first. Can I even make that choice? Yes, it comes up. Okay, there it is. Can I connect and live view? I'm gonna have to look that up. What is the bear pattern on SV Boney camera? I tried to focus my guide scope on the moon. That did not work. The guide scope is not nearly uh, as uh, precise. And the camera might double as a planetary camera, but uh, boy, did it not resolve any detail. I should have started with the Batonov mask. Here we have it. We've got. <clears throat> Uh, step one complete. We've got uh, the we've got the SV Boney camera running under APT. This is the SV 905C guide camera running on a guide scope through APT. And then over here, uh, <laughs> although there's far too much light from the moon, uh, we've got. Uh, the ASI 294MC Pro running as a guide camera off of a 1000 millimeter 6 inch SCT. <laughs> I think I'm starting to figure this out. I was shooting my UPPD mat uh, flats, but they weren't coming through. And the reason they weren't working out, I had all sorts of signal noise is because I had my gain setting too high. I had my gain setting for the MC uh, 294. I had to jump through some hoops, but I have my uh, capture plan going. I'm capturing 60 second exposures at 12 gain. Well, that didn't go as planned, uh, but as they say, task failed successfully. 
I was able to flip my guide scope and my primary scope around. I was taking images using my guide scope and my guide camera in APT, and I was, and I was guiding in PHD2 using my imaging camera with my primary scope. Uh, the problem was, though, that my guide camera, my SV Boney SV905C, did not have the acuity, uh, I suppose the well depth, to be able to uh, bring out the details uh, in the galaxy. So not only is the image sensor uh, small with a smaller resolution, but for the resolution that it does have, it's not able to uh, bring out those dust lanes in the galaxy. All I can really see is the outline. That was an interesting experiment. Now I know what happens. What am I going to do now? <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, I'm going to try flipping my main camera, the ASI 294MC Pro, and my guide camera, the SV Boney SV905C. <laughs> Okay, there we have it. I have to take out every single spacer, including the filter drawer, in order to get the back focus to work for the ASI camera. Unbelievably, the skies have cleared a little bit. What started out as a night that was completely overcast with so much haze I could barely make out the moon is now just somewhat hazy and I can make out a few stars. Uh, most of them are um, washed out by the brightness of the moon, which is, if not full, close to full at this point. But even more unbelievably, I am guiding through my main scope at 1500 millimeter focal length. So I am very excited uh, I don't want to leave this and go to bed because I want to see what, how this is going to turn out. But at the same time, it is 2.30 in the morning. So I'm going to let this run and hope for the best. I can't believe this setup actually worked. Uh, I don't know about the quality of the data coming out. Uh, I'm effectively putting an astrophotography camera onto a telephoto 50 millimeter lens. Uh, so would I get similar results with my DSLR? Maybe, and that might be worth a shot. I'm going to take the scope in for now and review what I've been able to capture so far. Hey everybody, the other night went so well trying to take photographs of the Andromeda Galaxy that I thought I would take some wide-angle shots of the Veil Nebula as well. So uh, I've got the scope out. Uh, I'm shooting through my guide scope uh, with my cooled camera. And uh, I've already got a few frames back, so it uh, looks like the process is actually working. Uh, I'll tag those images to the end of the video as well. Quick note on processing. As usual, all of my stacking has been done in Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, instead of using traditional darks and flats and bias frames, I used my UPP DMAT approach, which uh, uses a semi transparent sheet in order to capture flats and darks at the same time, which worked out quite well with the guide scope and took a lot of the sky irregularities out as well as taking out uh, the sensor glow. Uh, initial post-processing was done in Cyril, so this is an auto stretch in Cyril, linear stretch, this is pretty close to the image that I ended up with, 
And finally, uh, my final processing was done in GIMP, uh, where I went through a number of different stages of uh, combining and recombining, or rather separating, separately processing the stars from the nebula, and then finally recombining the image. So in this image, you can see that uh, in the guide camera, as you move away from the center, you can really see the stretching, the lens distortion, um, the lensing effect, the stretching of the stars, right? Because this is an apochromatic refractor. But there is a very cool feature in GIMP, which allows you to compensate for that at least a little bit. And I found this under filters and then distorts and lens distortion. So here, let's just pick a background color. Let's say here. And now we're going to grab the edge and we're just going to bring that in. Anyway, so you can see here, right, you can see the difference, all the stretching around the edges versus this image where that stretching is, is really taken in. So a uh, very cool feature. Um, it might be useful for some of my other images where I do have some lens distortion on my 6-inch uh, and definitely makes a big difference uh, when processing images from the guide scope. Hey, for anyone who stuck around till this point, I appreciate you. And I gotta tell you, I learned a lot. This was a proof of concept. And as such, I figured there are some things that probably wouldn't work out. While other things truly surprised me. For example, you can absolutely guide with an X-star mount and probably any other equatorial mount using a 1500 millimeter scope. I learned that uh, both guide scopes and guide cameras have extremely short back focus. I learned that the back focus on a guide scope is so short that a regular cooled camera might have a hard time achieving focus. I learned that you can, in fact, shoot with a guide scope and a guide camera, although the results for a guide camera are less than, than what you would want. I learned that you can use a guide camera to take pictures. They're not gonna be very good, or they won't be as good as uh, a real uh, apochromatic doublet or triplet, but you can see something. And to be honest, you can see more than what I could see with a, a comparable, um, with a comparable focal length on my DSLR, which is unmodified. So the better cooled camera with the worse guide scope optics still gives me the opportunity to image things that I wouldn't be able to otherwise image. What could I have done different? Well, for one thing, I could have spent more time focusing my scope. Um, I realized later on, uh, far too late, that I wasn't quite focused in or dialed in on focus uh, on the guide scope. And I could have tightened up on that, and that would have given me sharper stars. Anyway, um, I'm going to post all my images to the end, uh, including the ones that show the uncorrected guide scope images and then the lens corrected guide scope images. And you be the judge. Is this something that could work for you? In a pinch, could you use your guide scope to take a wider angle shot of something in the sky? Thanks for watching and clear skies.